we talk or do I trash this thing? The DA wants one of you to testify in the Giuliano case. Who's going to be? Huh. McCall. You know, you'd make a pretty good cop. But you'd make a lousy showgirl. Help! He's trying to kill me! No, Rick, you know I want kids. Sergeant McCall, you may be the first mother standing by at the delivery of her own baby. Look at, look at that. Is she beautiful? Yeah, what do you want? I have a package for you. Well, I'm just getting into the tub. I can't now. Uh, just leave it there. Outside the door? No, no, inside the courtyard. Uh, I'll buzz you in. Plumbing problem, Miss Pulaski. Mr. Warren wants me to check your bathroom. Okay, just a minute. Billy, what do you got? The victim was shot in the head at close range with a small caliber handgun, probably a 22. She's alive, but barely. 
And she looks to me to be six or seven months pregnant. Oh, my God. What do we got in the way of evidence here? Well, according to this New York State driver's license, she's Irene Pilevsky, 21, from Buffalo. Any evidence of robbery? Doesn't look like it. They didn't even bother to come in. Just shot her right there in the doorway. How long ago do you think that was? Neighbor Edna Wadley found her. She put in a call to us at about 427. Edna! 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 What's going on? What happened? Edna! Ma'am. What? Right. 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 Miss Wadley? I'm Sergeant Hunter. I understand you're the one that uh, discovered Miss Pulaski's body. Yeah. I live right next door to her. Poor baby. I tell you, I don't understand none of this. Who'd want to hurt that sweet child? Now, when you heard the gunshots... I didn't hear no shot. I went out to the lobby to pick up a package supposed to be left there for me, only there wasn't nothing there. And when I come back, I seen Irene's door open, and her... just laying there. Now, you sure you didn't hear anything that sounded like a car backfire? Look, ain't nothing wrong with my ears. I'm telling you, I didn't hear no shot. And my TV wasn't on, neither. Now, you say you went down for a package? Yeah, it come when I was taking a bath. So I told the guy to just leave it in the lobby, only it wasn't there when I went out there. You talked to him on the aircom? Yeah, when I buzzed him in. What time was that? Oh, let's see, it must have been about four. Yeah, because I didn't go take my bath until after your lucky day was over with. And that must have your been Your lucky day? Yeah, the game show, your oh, lucky yeah. day. You could win uh, dinettes. I and... thought you said your television wasn't on, though. Well, I always turn it off when my program goes off. What about Irene's friends? Tell me about them. Well, she's only been here a couple of months. She didn't have no friends, except for me and Sister Nora, over at St. Agnes' home, mm -hmm. you know? They was helping her with the baby. Yeah. Would you happen to have Sister Nora's address and phone number? Oh, sure I do. Irene, give it to me in case of emergency. It's in my apartment. Anybody you talk to hear gunshots? Nobody. Must have been a silencer. They make it a professional hit. That doesn't make any sense. She's just a kid. Sure does. Let's go find out why. I'm going to go over to the hospital. I'll drop you off to Sister Nora. She's more your type. Forgive the emotional display, but I, I still find it difficult to accept. Dear Lord, that child was such a gentle creature. Who would possibly wish her any harm? Are you sure it wasn't a robbery? It doesn't appear to be. Sister Nora, I need for you to tell me anything you can about Irene. That's very little, I'm afraid. The most important thing we offer these girls is confidentiality. The only reason we ask them for their birth certificate or driver's license is we're required to by law to be sure they aren't minors. Well, what about the father of Irene's baby? Did she have any contact with him? No. <laughs> he was back home, not here in Los Angeles. She didn't even tell him she was pregnant. Back home, you mean in Buffalo? Why, well, yes, that's where her family is. Do you know if she tried to contact the family there? Well, I tried to persuade her to tell them the truth, but she wouldn't hear of it. The thought of their finding out she was pregnant simply terrified Irene. So, she invented a story that she was traveling in Canada as an exchange student. And she'd call them every 10 days or so from Canada. Did you ever try to call the parents? Oh, good heavens, no. That would be violating an irrevocable trust. If we didn't offer that, many of these girls would opt for abortion. But Pilevsky is hardly a common name. I'm sure if you call Buffalo information. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Hello? Is this Mrs. Pilevsky? Yes. Yes, who's this? My name is Dee Dee McCall. I'm with the Metro Police in Los Angeles. Yeah. Mrs. Pilevsky, do you have a daughter named Irene? Yes. The bullet entered the frontal lobe, causing massive brain damage before lodging there. I don't understand. Is Irene going to be all right? Mrs. Pileski, the reason I asked to see you 
before you saw your daughter is that when she arrived at the hospital, she was brain dead. Her condition is irreversible. I'm sorry. There was nothing we could do. I want to see my daughter. Mrs. Paleski, be absolutely sure. I don't have to. I know my daughter. This isn't her. Oh, I'll send you a picture, then you'll see. I'm very sorry about this poor girl, but she's not my daughter. Irene left home after her father died three years ago. She said she was going to get money and send some to me, but I didn't hear anything. No letter. She didn't call. She was always going to do something big. Nothing ever worked out for her. When was the last time you saw Miss Bolesky? Six months ago. I came home, and there's Irene on the stoop waiting for me. How long did she stay? Two months. She was very distant. I, I couldn't get her to talk to me. And then one day, I, I came home, and she cut off all her hair. I mean, all of it, to here. She'd always been so proud of her hair. Well, I was very upset about that. Next morning, she was... she was gone. she leave a number or an address where you could reach her? Nothing. Ready, Sergeant. Ms. Polevsky, this is Officer Garrett. He's gonna take you to the airport. We're very sorry to have to put you through all this. Oh, it's okay. Believe me, it's okay. We'll keep you posted until we find Irene. You look for? Oh, yes, we've got to find her fast. You think somebody wants to kill Irene? Well, there's a good possibility of that, yes. Be sure to send us that picture, it'll help. I'll send it as soon as I get home. Have a nice flight. Thank you. Thank you very much. You better find that girl fast. Whoever put the hit on her is going to try again as soon as they figure out they killed the wrong girl. Morning, McCall. Morning, Hunter. How are you, Charlie? Glad you'll see you looking so happy and relaxed this morning because I got some depressing news for you. The DA wants one of you to testify in the Giuliano case. Who's it going to be? Hi. McCall. You work it out. Whoever it is, in my office in 10 minutes. Uh, wait. I want this case. You want to put for it? No. Let me have this case, OK? There's something, uh, something about it with the girl and the baby and everything. Just, I want the case, all right? Sure. Thanks. Well, I'll, uh, I'll make Charlie wait 10 minutes and then I'll go tell him. This one's an ICU with a bullet in her brain. Pregnant, Jane Doe. She was hiding from her parents using this one's ID, one Irene Polevsky. And this picture's about three years old. Her hair's cut a lot shorter now. We think she might have been the target for the bullet that Jane Doe took. Might have been? You mean you're just guessing? Well, it's one of the things I do best, Mike. By the way, we drew a blank on Jane Doe's fingerprints. Uh, she didn't have a car, so she probably never had any taken. You love to complicate my life, don't you? Complicated what? I got you the dental history on Jane Doe. Look at that. There's three fillings, one impacted wisdom tooth, and I have for you here everything that we have on Irene Polevsky. It's not great, but it's not bad on the Jane Doe, I mean. And if somebody's filed a missing persons report on her, well, I can probably get you something from the computer in a couple of hours. Well, I don't think uh, you're going to find anything in the computer. Now what? The girl told her family she was traveling with a group of students in Canada, so they don't think of her as missing. So there's no report. 
You got any conception what it's gonna be like to try to find this girl's family? I mean, just using this stuff? Look at this girl's face. I wouldn't recognize her if she was my daughter. And for her dental x-rays, they're not gonna mean nothing until somebody starts looking for her. Well, concent concentrate on Irene. Maybe she knows who this Jane Doe is. Put a picture in the paper. Maybe a little local news coverage is all we need. Yeah, you know that's all you ever give me? Is a bunch of mites and maybes? Well, that's why we come to you, Mike. Because you're the expert on mites and maybes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Do me a favor, cut out this coffee. It's making you nervous. Mm. Yeah, too much caffeine. What do you put in here, anyway? <laughs> Sergeant, I appreciate your concern, but the hospital ethics committee met this morning. Now, if someone doesn't come forward soon to claim responsibility, administration will have to ask the court to appoint a guardian. It will be up to the guardian to decide if and when life support will be discontinued. What are you saying? Are you, are you, are you saying that some stranger is going to be able to decide the fate of the baby that's inside that girl? The hospital can't assume responsibility indefinitely. If you can't find out who your Jane Doe is, we'll probably be instructed to turn off life support. Meantime, we're doing ultrasound tests and we're monitoring the heartbeat just in case. What about amniocentesis? The results of that test won't be in for 10 days. Preliminary findings show the lungs aren't developed and there's a hole in the heart. Are you saying the baby can't make it? No. It's not uncommon for a 27-week fetus to have a hole in its heart. Under normal circumstances, it would usually close just before or after birth. But normal circumstances don't prevail in this case. So what you're telling me is if somebody doesn't come forward to claim responsibility here, some court-appointed guardian is going to be able to pull the plug? All right, easy, Sergeant. Take it easy. Just how long we can keep Jane Doe's body functioning is an unknown, and it doesn't look very promising. How long is it going to take for the court to appoint this guardian? Sometime tomorrow, day after at the latest. Thank you. You're welcome. Sooner or later, her parents will realize she's missing and they'll call the police, but that might take days, even weeks. I understand the hospital's point of view. You know, it would cost a minute of money to keep someone on life support, not to mention delivering a baby that might have its own medical problems. Dee Dee, the hospital is not a charitable institution, nor is it an adoption agency. We're talking about a child here. I think I knew that. Now, relax, take it easy. I happen to agree with you. I happen to believe that your Jane Doe's parents probably will show up soon. So, I'm granting you your 72-hour injunction. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Which means, by the way, the county is footing the bill for the three days. So please, don't let me down. I won't. What's all this? Read it. It's a restraining order that prevents the hospital from taking instructions from anyone to pull the plug on Jane Doe's life support system for an additional three days. Good for you, Sergeant. Sit down. I have a steak. Surprisingly enough, they're very good here. It's not the reaction you expect, huh? Did you think I was drooling to pull the plug on Jane Doe and her baby? Um, no, I, uh, I, I just thought you weren't very concerned. Do police officers indulge their emotions on their cases? No. Actually, we have to keep a certain distance. Mm -hmm. But you're not willing to assume the doctors do, too? You know, Sergeant, everything I've done since I was 18 years old, I've done because I wanted to save lives, preserve them with dignity and comfort. All my instincts make me want to deliver that child and hand her over to someone who will love her and take care of her. Boy, I feel pretty stupid. Good. I want you to. You want some coffee? Oh, uh, yeah. 
Thank you. I'm very sorry. I thought that you were rather cold and callous, and I was very wrong. I'm sorry. You know, when I started in medicine 20 years ago, the world was a lot simpler. Life support systems were primitive, and all these complex ethical questions hadn't been asked yet. What I'm trying to say is, the ethics committee tries to do the right thing. But we have rules and regulations, and the hospital operates on a stringent budget and has to obey those rules and not take on responsibilities that belong elsewhere. So it warms me when somebody like you comes along and forces us to do what we wanted to in the first place. Oh, by the way, any progress finding Jane Doe's parents? We don't have too much to go on. But we're doing everything we can. What was your name again? Tiffany! Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. now, uh, what about your boyfriend now? Oh, so, anyway. I'm going with this guy named Todd, right? And we are just, like, really, really super in love with each other and everything like that. And the only problem is he works in this really cool club. And one night, this, like, totally bogus girl shows up, you know? And Todd, like... Dumps me. <laughs> Couldn't even believe he could do such a cool thing like that. And then I read in the newspaper that the police were looking for this Irene Polevsky and everything, so I, like, came right down. <sighs> Why? Why what? Why did you come right down? Because, like, that was her name, Irene Polevsky. Oh, yeah. Why am I gonna forget her name? I mean, she took my boyfriend away from me. The name Polevsky is absolutely branded on my memory forever for life. Is that her? <gasps> oh my God, yes! This face is branded on my memory too. Only, you know something? She didn't have like all this hair and stuff. Like her hair when I saw her was like really, really, really short. It was totally ugly. It was absolutely disgusting. I mean, I wouldn't even wear my hair like that. I wouldn't be caught dead with that hairstyle and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? But, yes, that's her. Once she moved in on Todd, he could not even remember my first name. <laughs> Now, look, uh, your boyfriend is Todd who? My ex-boyfriend, please. His name is Todd Logan, and he's a real, real super fox, and he works at the Cosmos Club on Pico, and he plays guitar, lead guitar, even with the Stiff Springs. Have you heard the Stiff Springs? They're really, really good playing. Uh, now, when did all this happen with Irene, I mean? They're showing up. I, oh, okay. Well, she, like, first came into the picture, like, nine, no, maybe, like, ten weeks ago. But listen, sir, can I just ask you a really quick question? It's kind of important. Um, I was just wondering, is she like, um, is she like in trouble or anything like that, you know? Not that I know of, no. Oh, God. Because, like, for the longest time, I was just, like, totally mad at her, you know what I'm saying? And then one day, I just woke up and I just realized out of the blue that hate is just, like, such bad karma. So I said to myself, okay, Tiffany, just be big. So I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to her. Hunter, I got three more days. Oh, hey, listen, is that fantastic? Good sure for is, you. Sure is, yeah. Huh? Oh, boy. Look, I have to get back to court. And I'd like to have you, Sweet Pea, to tell her everything you just told me, and I mean everything. Okay. And, uh, good luck to you. Hi, so what's your name? Well, my name is Tiffany, but like I was telling you, this tall man that's leaving right now, um, my ex-boyfriend, who's a real total, total babe, his name is Todd Logan and everything, and he's like working at the Cosmos Club on Pico Boulevard, and if there was a rock magazine for GQ guys, he would be in it, I swear to God. Todd Logan here. Over there. Logan? Who wants him? Los Angeles Metropolitan Police. Can we talk? Yeah, sure. Just a minute.
Do we talk or do I trash this thing? Please, lady, be careful. Don't even hold it like that. You could drop it. Do we talk? Yeah, yeah, just br bring it down real easy. That's right. Talk about what? About Irene. Irene? Why didn't you say so, for God's sake? You know, with Irene gone, this is the only good thing I got left. It gave me a full scare, you know? Tell me about her. We were together for like nine or ten weeks. I didn't know it was possible to feel like that about a chick, you know? And then one night we heard on the radio that a girl named Irene Pilevsky's been shot. Irene looked sort of shocked, you know? I told her it must have been some sort of weird coincidence or something, right? Then I went to work. When I got home, she was gone. Nothing left but a note. What'd it say? It said, I love you. Someday I'll call and explain, don't forget about me. <laughs> like I could forget about her, right? Did she call? No, but I'm waiting. What did Irene do before she came here to L.A.? Said she was a showgirl in Las Vegas. We had this chance to go to Vegas together. A weekend gig, all expenses paid, right? So I tell Irene about it, and she gets all paranoid. Says she never wants to go near there. I asked her why, and she said, don't ask. I turned the weekend down. Are you going to look for her? Yeah. When you find Irene, you tell her I didn't forget about her. Tell her to come home. I'll tell her, Tom. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. She was a showgirl there six months ago. Her real name is Irene Pilevsky, but I don't think she was using it. Look, I'm going to send you a picture of her with a Detective Vasquez. He's coming up in the morning with a prisoner he's going to deliver to you guys. And do me a favor, put a rush on it, because we think the girl's a hit target. Yeah, thanks. Ray, do me a favor. If Hunter or anybody else calls, tell him I'll be at the hospital. You got it. Hunter, this message just came in from a call from Las Vegas PD. Irene Polevsky used the name Gloria Boucher. Boucher disappeared six months ago. She can call Detective Feeney. Thank you very much. Sure. Hi, can I help you? Are you Sergeant McCall? No, I'm Sergeant Hunter. Sergeant McCall is my partner. Stacy Collins. Stacy, how are you? I drove all night from Vegas after the last show. The police called me and said that Sergeant McCall had made an inquiry about Gloria Boucher. Hmm, yeah. If this is her, she's better known here as Irene Pulaski. That's her. But in Vegas, she's just Gloria Boucher. She was my roommate and closest friend for over two years. About six months ago, she disappeared. No note, no call. It was kind of like losing a sister. I've been scared to death. If you know what's going on with her, could you tell me? Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Sure. If I get some breakfast to go along with it. I know just the chef. Come on. Apparently, she and Todd had a pretty good thing going until she got scared and took off again. Thank you. Did you talk to this Todd Logan? I didn't personally know. My partner, Sergeant McCall, did, though. Uh, that's how I found out she'd been in Las Vegas. And that's all this Todd Logan could tell you? Hmm. Well, he might know more, but that's all we got for now. Where can I find him? Why? Well, because people tell cops only what cops ask. People tell showgirls everything. You know, you'd make a pretty good cop. But you'd make a lousy showgirl. Oh. I do my homework, Dee Dee. Now, that three-day extension I granted you cost the county $13,750. And you're no closer to finding your Jane Doe than you were then. But we are. Every day that those parents don't hear from that girl, that's another day closer they come to reporting her missing. Now, every police department here and in Canada has a physical description of her and a copy of her dental x-rays. Please, just extend the injunction a few more hours. Just 48 hours, 24 hours. But what about the cost of keeping your Jane Doe alive? 
Be practical a moment, please. Practical? We're talking about a child. What if the child is born with serious defects? People looking for babies, they want to know what they're getting. Listen to me, I happen to think that child's going to be very healthy when it's born. With a hole in its heart. I've done my homework, too. One out of every ten unborns has this problem at six months. The hole usually seals up shortly before or right after birth. That may be true, Dee Dee. But the hospital won't assume responsibility, nor will anyone else. Byron, just listen to me for a minute, all right? If no one else is going to accept responsibility for that baby, then I will. Just wait a minute. I've given this a lot of thought. I really have. Now I think that baby's going to be normal, and I'm willing to take responsibility. Will you help me? I'm going to protect you from yourself. I'm going to grant you one more 24-hour extension. Use the time to think it over. After that, if you still want to do it, I'll get the ball rolling to appoint you her guardian. It just seems so funny. Most women have nine months to prepare themselves for this. I mean, it's virtually happening to you overnight. You know, what if... What if the baby comes into this world with a... A birth defect. A birth defect, yeah. I know the odds. I know the circumstances. I know that it could happen, but to tell you the truth, I feel inside that it, it won't. I really, really do. And even if it does, that is all the more reason that I will need to be there for that baby. Well, yeah, I mean, I understand that. What I need to know is, is that your decision about this is based on fact and reality, not on emotion and circumstance. Well, emotion and circumstance obviously do enter into this, but here are the facts. That baby needs a parent desperately. Now, I can feel that need. It's more as I want to. Now, I am moving carefully. I am moving deliberately. I have thought about this for a long time. Rick, you know I want kids. Yeah. And that's something that's very important to me. And I feel ready. I really do. Let me play devil's advocate with you here on one subject. What if somebody steps forward and puts a claim on that child? Well, then I will have to deal with that if and when it happens. But till it does, I'm all that that baby has, and I know it. I can't turn my back on that. Could you? pretty clear about all this, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I like you. Six, go ahead. L56, we have a patch through for Sergeant Hunter. Yeah, I'll patch him through. Hunter, this is Stacy Collins. Stacy, what's happening? Real quick question. Are you having me tailed? No, why? Well, somebody in a beige sedan's following me. Well, where are you right now? I'm at my hotel, Wilshire and Oakhurst. Well, I've got a blue Mustang convertible. OK, here's what I want you to do. In 10 minutes, leave your place and drive north on Riverside Drive. As you come to Los Feliz, cross Los Feliz, go into Griffith Park. I'll pick you up there. And once you're inside the park, make a series of right and left hand turns. And we'll be able to find out who's following you. You got that? You got it. 10 minutes. Who's that? Stacy Collins, somebody's following.
L-56? L-56, go. I'd like a 1028 and 29 on California license number 2, David Charlie Lincoln 310. 10-4, L-56. California license number David Charlie Lincoln 310, a 1987 old, registered to ABC Auto Rental, Los Angeles. No wants, no warrants. 10 4, I'll be stopping the vehicle at Los Feliz Boulevard, northbound. L56, you want a backup unit? Negative at this time, we'll advise. <laughs> Metropolitan Police, get out of the car very slowly and put your hands on the roof, please. Hey, I'm a cop, for God's sakes. Las Vegas PD. My badge is in my right jacket pocket. Where's your gun? Left side. Okay, Sergeant Ronco, what are you doing following this lady? I'm on a case. Miss Collins is involved. What case is that? The Strober murder in Las Vegas. Her roommate, Gloria Beauchet, was an eyewitness. Well, usually when a police officer from another jurisdiction comes in to work on one of our cases, they notify us. I just got in town early this morning. I didn't want to lose her. Look, I don't know how you found me, and I'm not so sure I want to know. All this is making me kind of nervous. I wonder if you or Sergeant McCall could follow me back to my hotel? Sure. Uh, this is my partner, Sergeant McCall. She'll take you to the precinct where you can meet our Captain Devane. He'll show you our case file. Much obliged. Sergeant, shall we? There's something fishy about this guy. Yeah, what's that? Well, the Strober murder. If Gloria was an eyewitness, she never told me about it. And the police never came around to ask either one of us any questions. Yeah? OK, come here. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back to your hotel, check out, and check into another hotel. You got that? After you do, let me know where you are. And you'll keep me posted? Yes, I will. Yeah, Las Vegas, please. The number of the Las Vegas Police Department. McCall, I've been looking for you. Got a couple of messages for you. Uh, Dr. Schneider called. Your Jane Doe has toxemia. They're going to have to take the baby by C-section as soon as they've got an available OR. And a call from Todd Logan said he heard from Irene. She's going to be staying at a friend's house in Malibu Canyon. He left an address. Here it is. And that's a six. Ray, I love you. <laughs> Do me a favor, will you? Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Nick Ronco with Vegas PD. Uh, he, he needs to talk to, to, to Captain Devane and probably get a look at this file. Show him around, will you? You got it. I'm not going far. I'll be back before closing time. Sure, thanks. Uh, it looks like the captain's in with someone right now. I'll just check with the secretary and let him know we got to see him. Okay. She went to the hospital, I think. You know, she wanted me to introduce the captain to this Vegas cop, but the guy's not where I left him. Now, listen to me very carefully. That guy is not a cop. You got that, Ray? He is not a cop. Now, think hard. Where did he go? She left a file on her desk. It's gone. There was a message in it that I took for her from a Todd Logan, uh, something about Irene at a house in Malibu Canyon. I remember the address. 316 Terracotta Way. Okay, great. Now listen very carefully. Have McCall Page at the hospital, the OB ward. 
Tell McCall that I talked to Vegas police. They told me that Ronco has not been a police officer for over six months. You got that? Also, give her the information you just gave me and tell her I'm on my way to that location, code three. Got it? Got it. You mean in the operating room? Sergeant McCall, you may be the first mother standing by at the delivery of her own baby. Sergeant McCall, you have an urgent call uh, from your headquarters. All right, we start the procedure at 6 p.m. Sure. I'll be there. Thank you. Yeah, this is McCall. Ray, I cannot thank you enough. Yeah, I got it. Terracotta way. Right. Thank you. Can I make a call from here? Sure. Dial 9. Todd, listen to me. Call Irene, tell her to get out of that house right now. You stay where you are. We'll call you. Hi.
You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Hunter? You okay? Yeah, we're fine. This is Irene. This is Dee Dee. Hi. Hi. Look, I want to get back to the hospital. They're taking the baby. I want to be there. Get going. I'll see you there. You know this guy? The guy's name's Nick Ronco. Yeah, I saw him kill a man named Strober. Let's call your mother. to the precinct I ran into uh, Mike Harrison, who's at my desk. He found Jane Doe's nest again. They're farmers from Wisconsin. It's for the best, right? Yeah. 